water and everything, that is not the base. We should have some improvements in Bangalore city and whole of Karnataka. I think BJP has the edge. Okay, why is that? People are complaining a lot about that government. No doubt, uh, but uh, no doubt there are complaints, uh. but overall the performance is uh, good. Okay. And uh, say with regard to corruption. Yeah. Uh, if you take that into account, uh, no, no doubt in BJP there is corruption, huh. but it is to a lesser extent. Oh. Have you been happy with the growth of Bengaluru? Obviously, yeah. yeah. We are very much happy actually. Okay. Since almost 18 years I am in Bangalore and uh, I have seen it how it has grown so nicely. It has extended the boundaries and really the culture wise also uh, I feel that because of being cosmopolitan city, it's uh, really awesome being here. The 75 percent BJP and uh, other is uh, Congress and uh, Janata, you know. 75 percent BJP. Would you like to add something? Uh, regarding the election, <laughs> I prefer BJP. Okay. <laughs> what is your report card for the government? Government will give full support for the BJP. They are facing a lot of criticism that they have not solved the issues of Bengaluru. Yeah, it will take time. The Bangalore is not a small city, so it will take time. We have to give the time for the, any government mm -hmm. to solve any problem. So we'll see further where they'll do. Okay. But can I ask you, the Congress is fighting these elections very uh, strongly. They have also given some guarantees for the poor and the middle class. What basis they are giving, we don't know. Free of cost, anything, it's not uh, good. You don't believe that no. this is the right strategy? No. Sir? We want BJP to come back. Why is that? Why is that? Because of the everything you have, every day we see what Mr. Modi or Mr. Bommai has done for Karnataka. Okay. I think we never expected that BJP is going to work such a way so that everyone will be happy. I don't know why these Congress people are that 40%. This is only one person out of the entire contractor has come out. That too, whether it is genuine or not genuine, no one knows. as far as this area and uh, this place is concerned in Bengaluru it seems like there is reasonable support for the incumbent government despite some of the headlines from Bengaluru and you know some of the charges of corruption and lack of infrastructure which specifically for a city like Bengaluru are the big issues it seems like the BJP has managed to at least convince some amount of people that they have the right intention to work and whether it's going to be that intention that is going to be the clinching factor. We'll have to wait and see. Hello, everyone. You're watching News Epicenter with me, Maria Shakil. Maharashtra politics has been delivered a major shock with Sharad Pawar announcing that he will step down as NCP president. He made the announcement during the launch of his memoir. He maintains that he is not exiting from political life and will continue to serve the state and the nation. But this announcement has not gone down well with the NCP cadre, who protested, demanding Sharad Pawar to roll back his decision. While the top leadership of the party is trying to convince him to stay on as NCP chief. In fact, Ajit Pawar, his nephew, has said Sharad Pawar has sought two to three days to think or rethink about the request from the NCP cadre. At the same time, the top brass of the NCP is in a huddle to decide who will take the reins of the party. This has caught the Agadi allies off guard as well. The Uthav camp has said that the nation needs Sharad Pawar's leadership, while the Congress maintains that Pawar's move will not affect the alliance. The BJP is playing the wait and watch game with Maharashtra Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis calling it an internal matter of the NCP. But since the inception of the Agadi Alliance, Sharad Pawar has been the political glue between the three parties. How will this impact the alliance ahead of the state and Lok Sabha elections when uh, facing off with a dominant Shinde BJP alliance? Remember, this also comes after rumors of Ajit Pawar being unhappy within the party and speculation of him jumping ship to the BJP. So what's the road ahead for the Mahavikas Agadi? Okay. 
ನೀ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪದಾರ್ಥ ಅದು ಇರುತ್ತೆ ತುಳಸಿಯ ಹೊಸ ನೀರು ಅದು ನಾಯಿ ತುಳಸಿಯ ಸಗೆಯ ಕಾಮನ ಕಾಯಿ ಕಮಲ ತುಳಸಿಯೇ ಆಯೆ इस्तीफा दिया है वो किस कारण वो दिया है ये तो बताना मुश्किल है जो मीडिया में अजीत दादा पवार के बारे में जो आता था या उनके परिवार में कुछ हो या उनकी तबीयत के बारे में हो ये बात अभी बताने का कोई मतलब भी नहीं है व्यक्तिगत फैसला है और राष्ट्रवादी कांग्रेस का एक आंतरिक मामला है और इस समय उसके ऊपर चर्चाएं भी चल रही है मंथन भी चल रहा है और पार्टी किस निर्णय तक जा रही है इस बारे में हमें कोई अंदेशा भी नहीं है तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि इस पर अभी बात करना ये बहुत प्रीमेच्योर होगा straight to poll bound karnataka where prithvi raj chavan former maharashtra chief minister and senior congress leader is joining me live mr chavan really appreciate your time uh, you have been an important figure in maharashtra politics but someone who has been central to the state's politics is sharad pawar for him to decide to not to continue as the head of a political party he founded uh, what was your reaction when you heard it was it like a surprise or a shock no i think it was certainly a surprise uh, for the last 15 days to almost one month we have been hearing of some disquiet within the ncp uh, there have been uh, news reports uh, which we neither confirm nor denied of uh, mr ajit pawar having flown to delhi to meet mr amit shah along with mr prapul patel this was neither denied nor uh, confirmed by anybody uh, and so uh there is a decision of the supreme court pending hmm. uh we are expecting that decision to come after the karnataka voting that is after 10th because on 15th uh, the two justices retire so after all this exercise that cgi has gone into about the maharashtra's disqualification matter uh between hmm. 11th and 14th we expect the decision to come now that would be a momentous decision because some of us very strongly feel that uh, the shinde group of families including mr shinde himself has violated the 10th schedule of the constitution and uh, he can no longer remain an mla and he can no longer remain a chief minister hmm. so what will happen if that happens if that doesn't happen then shinde fadnavis uh, government continues uh, even if mr shinde is disqualified uh, bjp and the remaining shinde group will still have a majority so is there a space for somebody like mr ajit pawar hmm. in the new dispensation hmm. so this this speculation has been rife for a very long time yes and uh, right in middle of all that discussion uh, there's one other critical factor which i must mention i mean uh, belgaon i mean karnataka campaigning here yes. and i find that almost 40 people of ncp are contesting the election uh, who are contesting just to divide the congress okay. vote you have made an interesting point they're helping bjp you are essentially uh, saying suffer. that ncp is contesting elections in karnataka to help the bjp and defeat the congress uh, you know l- let me go sp- uh, specific in terms of maharashtra politics can you imagine maharashtra politics without mr pawar uh, 
many saw him as the architect of Mahavikas Igadi, someone who managed to get ideologically uh, opposite sides in the Congress and the Shiva Sena on the same platform. I mean, and, and ensured that Uddhav Thakre would be the chief minister, the Congress would agree to back it. Uh, do you think that there would be no Mahavikas Agadi uh, without Mr. Pawar? Let, let, me, let me come here. Uh, Maria, you're free to call him architect if you feel. But this is the three-party alliance, and all three parties had to agree to come together to form a joint government. Uh, now, of the three parties, Congress is a national party. Now, we cannot take a decision lightly as a regional party like Shiva Sena or NCP can take. So, definitely, it took some time for the Congress party to come to a decision. Mr. Pawar, yesterday, in a book on his uh, biography that is released, has commented adversely on the time taken by Congress party to agree to this alliance. That's I think right. there's nothing surprising because there is a difference between regional parties and the national party. Having said so, as I said, you are free to call him architect, but this alliance um, came into being only when all the three parties agreed to come into uh, Of course, he is the senior most person. He is senior by age, so and we all respect him. But point is, uh, it was not him alone. All of us agreed to come together. And we, in the Congress party, pleaded very strongly with the central leadership of the Congress party. They, they were reluctant initially because there were other states involved. So they had to talk to the minority leadership in Maharashtra, in other states, what impact would this alliance have. Ultimately, Mrs. Gandhi and Rahulji agreed to this alliance. Okay. Yes, it is a three-party alliance. And okay, so you say that, that, that Mr. Mr. Pawar, so Pawar, of course, was the architect, but the Congress feels that it had an important role to play. And Mr. Chavan, you yourself had an important role to play. What do you think will happen in Maharashtra politics uh, with uh, Mr. Pawar exiting? Of course, he has said that he isn't really retiring from uh, active politics. Who, according to you, then, is best suited to, su uh, to succeed Sharad Pawar? No, first of all, the final word on whether he has resigned already, whether that resignation is final is not out yet. So the entire rank and final party is, uh, has risen like one man uh, to request him not to uh, quit his position as a party president. Hmm. So we don't know whether this is final decision, although Mr. Ajit Pawar did state emphatically that you must uh, give him his due and he wants to retire, he must be allowed to retire, all that. But all the second level leadership from Prabhul Patel to Mr. Tatkare, who accompanied Ajit Pawar to meet Amit Shah, and everybody, uh, including Mr. Bhujbal and all these names, which have been talked about as a group which may break away and all that, all of them were one today in pleading with Mr. Pawar not to give up his national leadership role of the NCP. So, what happens ultimately, we don't know. So, the, the question that you have raised is a hypothetical question based on the fact that, yes, Mr. Pawar is finally and irre irrevocably resigned as the president of the NCP at the national level. Okay. He himself has very clearly stated that he'll remain in active politics, he'll uh, run out his uh, remaining three years of Rajya Sabha term, uh, he'll be traveling all, all over the place. So has he really uh, given up the presidentship? I'm not yet sure. Let's right. wait for a few days for it to happen. Fine but enough, one sir. thing is very clear, hmm. Ajit Pawar appears to be isolated within the NCP. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chavan, last question to you. Is this more of an, an, in, of an internal battle playing out? Because, because Mr. Pawar, in this one move, has managed to unite the party, which was, for the last few days, appearing to be divided. Now it is one party of Sharat Pawar. There's no Ajit Pawar faction or other you know, divisions which were visible. Well, I think that is a view which one could uh, take because uh, there was definitely rumours that a large group of MLAs which follow Mr. Ajit Pawar, uh, provided Mr. Ajit Pawar is made uh, the Chief Minister of Maharashtra by BJP, which I personally find extremely difficult to swallow. Uh, and so, if 40 MLAs had left with him, of course, the party would have been split. Hmm. So, that is now off the table now. Hmm. First of all, uh, it all depends on what happens in the Supreme Court judgment. 
if the government goes, then there's a question of new chief minister. I personally feel, I don't feel it's possible. Uh, I, I, it will be very strange for uh, Mr. Narendra Modi to accept Ajit Pawar as the chief minister of Maharashtra. And so that likely split in the NCP apparently uh, is off the table now. I mean, everybody is rallied behind Mr. Pawar. Yes, visibly. Uh, uh, so that one outcome can be, um, we can see that that outcome has happened. All but of course, final chapter is not written yet. Uh, although Mr. Ajit Pawar appears to be in isolated in the NCP, uh, tomorrow is another day. We'll wait for what happens tomorrow. But I think as long as all the three parties are together, unless NCP decides to leave MVA, MVA is intact, MVA will fight forthcoming elections together. And Mr. Narendra Modi is mortally afraid of facing elections in Maharashtra with MVA together. All right. Uh, Prithvi Rajavan, always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Uh, let me bring in my guest, Sayyid Zafar Islam, is BJP national spokesperson. We have uh, Rakesh Shetty of the Congress. The NCP spokesperson will be joining me shortly. Sudhir Surewanshi is the author of book Checkmate. Rashid Kidwai is author and senior journalist. We know what is the reaction of NCP and the Congress. Let me bring in the BJP first on the show. Uh, Zafar Islam, Sharad Pawar deciding to say that it's all, it's enough is enough as far as uh, him continuing as the NCP chief is concerned. We know how uh, he is uh, liked by your party men. Is it a big disappointment? Well, let me tell you very candidly. <clears throat> First of all, it is an internal matter of NCP. And we do not want to comment anything about their internal affairs. Hmm whether he wants to continue as a as a president of the party, whether he wants to step down, give a responsibility to a, another gentleman or anyone who feel he feels appropriate to take over from him uh, as a presidentship. Having said that, we will, as, a, as, a, as a, an independent party, Bharatiya Janta Party, we will not comment. We don't prefer to comment on internal affairs of another party. But the way another MVA partner, the way Mr. Chavan was commenting about uh, Mr. Ajit Pawar being sidelined, isolated, kind of a statement he was making was totally like he's pushing Mr. Pawar to quit the party or he's pushing Mr. Pawar to, to uh, leave the president, presidency. Hmm. I mean, it's totally unwarranted the kind of comment he was making. I mean, that is the differentiating factor between us and the Congress party because Congress party still feels they are the largest party, they are the, uh, the nationwide party, even though their presence on the ground is next to negligible. Yet, they want to demonstrate something and this arrogance, arrogance actually will eventually will uh, break MVA for sure. Okay. And it is not me, okay. it is the statement which has been made by Mr. Chavan okay. who so, so, feels that uh, so, Mr. So the, Pawar was not the so architect. The, uh, did, Do you think did, that anybody did, other than Mr. Pawar could have stitched this kind of relationship? Nobody could have stitched this kind of relationship. Yes, that's true. Except Pawar. Yes. Mr. Chavan has no authority, nor the ability, nor the a, a, a statesmanship that what needs to be spoken about someone who has mm. done this uh, uh, MVA, I think he should have been given some nice compliment to Mr. Pawar instead of making this kind of a statement. I think it is born to, even though it's an internal uh, matter of internal affairs of the but party. You but you are objecting to, to what the Congress is saying that, by saying that this is an internal <laughs> matter. Uh, Sudhir, has Sharad I'm Pawar... I'm saying the kind of statement is made. Yes, has Sharad Pawar managed to checkmate his own party? The reason why I'm saying it is that in with this one move, the entire NCP is saying that they are Pawar Saab's party. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Pawar, Sharad Pawar, if you see his political acumen, uh, he has earned the name killing many birds in a one store. Yes. By, uh, but how uh, many know, birds did he kill? One, of uh, course, Ajit know, Pawar, but who else? Uh, maybe BJP uh, as well. Uh, you know, we don't know how many birds kill when we, you know person throw the stone. Later on, the casualty we start counting it and identifying the uh, casualties. So we will in the over the period of time we will come to know who has who, you know who has got killed or who has got checkmated within the party and outside the party because this resignation cannot be uh, you know message for within the party people. It is uh, of course it is a lesson for them. But it is also lesson or message for the outside the people who are eyeing on Ajit Pawar or the major faction of the NCP 
सो लेसन फॉर देम कि यू नो एंटायर एनसीपी इज विथ शरद पवार व्हाट आई सी थ्रू इज रिजिग्नेशन ही वांट्स टू सेटल अदर यू नो इश्यूज व्हिच आर इन पेंडिंग विथ इन द एनसीपी सो इज ही एक्चुअली लुकिंग फॉर सक्सेशन टू बी डिसाइडेड or is this Absolutely. essentially telling his nephew that you have to wait wait for a little longer to to you know perhaps occupy my chair because i am very much there i may have resigned but the entire party is with me those 23 mlas who could have been seen with you last week they are standing with me the moment i'll say that i am gone i am resigning absolutely if you see today's moment hmm. many very senior most ncp leaders were just break down hmm. they were very emotional they were crying and you know we never see such kind of uh, you know uh, emotions uh, earlier so everybody was ra rallying behind uh, mr pawar hmm. that is one thing another thing uh, in the succession is a major issue uh, within the ncp hmm. whether his nephew ajit pawar will uh, you know carry forward his legacy or his daughter supriya sule hmm. so i think that uh, Uh, by doing uh, uh, you know and uh, announcing his resignation hmm. i think he is likely to pay the way for his daughter supriya sule okay. and unless and until what i personally as a political uh, you know uh, analysis also feel that unless and until she has given the big responsibility or she step in in the big shoe she will not emerge uh, our evolve as a leader okay. and that is most so you important. are saying that the father has made up his mind perhaps to hand over the reins of the party to the daughter not the nephew Okay. Uh, before Absolutely. I bring in Clyde, uh, Clyde, uh, welcome to News Epicenter. Uh, Rashid, why did Sharad Pawar quit, and what next for the NCP? Uh, uh, Maria, it it was a calculated move. I remember Mr. Pawar would not like to be outwitted the way Mulayam Singh Yadav was outwitted ah. or the way N T Ramana was outwitted. I can understand Mr. Zafar Islam's anxiety. See. मारिया वो मुंह में लड्डू आते आते रह गया यू नो दैट प्रोब्लम कब तक लेफ्ट मुंह में लड्डू किसके जा रहा था मुंह में लड्डू तो किसी आई मीन द माउथ वाज इन डिसाइडेड इवन दो द लड्डू वाज ऑन द टेबल लड्डू वाज ऑन द टेबल दैट्स व्हाट आई एम सेइंग सो आई वेल आई डोंट एग्री विद मिस्टर सुरवंशी द क्राइसिस इज ओवर मिस्टर शरद पवार हैज ट्रिगर्ड द क्राइसिस द बीजेपी वाज गोइंग टू बी अ गेनर एंड द कांग्रेस वाज अ लूजर सो दैट एक्सप्लेन्स मिस्टर पृथ्वीराज चौहान्स एंजाइटी एंड मिस्टर जफर इस्लाम्स एंथुसियाज्म Uh, so you are saying that, that this is a controlled that, blast this is a i mean, i don't know i don't know the final outcome pawar sahab ne ek apna matlab wo uh, gola dag diya hai now it is for the ncp because gola the ambulances were going away now yeah. i think uh, you know mr ajit pawar seems to be outwitted whether we do not hmm. know the chacha bhatija together or not because when it comes to mr pawar nobody knows except for mr pawar i remember in 1993 mr pawar was the defense minister ah. he was holding you know press conferences and suddenly nobody knew even the closest journalist to him and he became you know chief minister of maharashtra so see there is a element of surprise that mr pawar has yes that unpredictability so, rashi that you're talking about it's quintessential old world politician clyde you know nobody knew what mr pawar would be doing today and he has chosen the day of his memoir release to talk about it and the manner in which he said this is it clyde so is mr yeah. pawar out or does he have uh, his uh, leg at the door <laughs> you know mari i have been listening to all laddus and think the last time uh, rashid bhai and i had a sort of conversation you brought through and i'm a very happy debating with rashid bhai but the fun part is you know sudhir uh, suryavanshi my friend is also i mean i can't see all because i'm on the phone here but sudhir's uh, you know articles we wake up in the morning to know what's happening in our party right but the fact of the matter is only in the newspaper is not not what is happening outside but the, having said that even we let me tell you very honestly we we were very surprised and shocked when uh, honorable paul sahab you know announced that he is stepping down but uh, the cadre is not happy the cadre you know the emotional out, outburst that you saw throughout the day we have asked him to reconsider but let me tell you what he clearly said he said that he is stepping down as the president but he'll continue to be our leader he'll continue to be a part of the whole political system that is the ncp and he's going to be our mentor and guide us so that we don't have any problems with that only thing is we want him to be our president continue as our president because we all learned from him we'll continue to keep learning from him and as to you know all the speculations over the last few weeks because of what mr suryavanshi has been writing or what the bjp has been saying i mean you know you can go to town and we can speculate but i you know we we don't think that way i mean what right now after hearing mr pawar what he said 
like like rashid bhai said you know i, I mean rashid bhai and i get along well rashid bhai said you know sometimes only power sub knows what he's thinking and why he said that so it's best for all of us not to delve too much into what he's thinking he must have taken a decision but like you know throughout the day some people said that you know he's now left politics so, no so clyde uh, were you also caught by a surprise just like everybody absolutely absolutely all of us we we never uh, we, we never anticipated he would announce that today we all went there for the you know publication of his book and when we heard that you know there was an emotional outburst from all of us including me i mean he he is a mentor he is the one who we look up to rakesh shetty you, you know, know as zafar islam uh, rashid kidwai all of them have issues to what uh, prithviraj chavan said on the show you know for him to make no, the assessment I, I, the way I, I, he did no no see i don't fully agree with prithviraj chavan uh, sharad pawar uh, whatever decision he took today this is a purely internal matter of ncp uh, but we need to understand that sharad pawar is one of the stalwart leaders in not only in maharashtra in this country hmm. he has become the youngest chief minister of maharashtra at the age of 35 and he has a very long and very successful uh, political life you know hmm. and uh, we all across party lines people respect him a lot hmm. and today what happened was a shock for even for congress workers because we look up to him and uh, it was very shocking to see his decision but uh, just now while we were talking just uh, ajit pawar and supriya uh, sule came out and uh, to yashwant rao chavan center and they said he due to this political situation right now what ncp and the workers have come out uh, sharad pawar is going to make his uh, decision in within next two days and uh, i think we should all sh should wait and see what will be his next move okay so we'll have to wait and see but sudhir um uh, i remember supriya sule actually say that there'll be two blast in terms of news was this one of them we uh, i mean we suppose that what supriya sule has said uh, in pune ki there will be two political earthquake uh, we suppose that uh, you know we believe uh, today's uh, sharad pawar uh, resignation as a party president so then in that one... case then in that case uh, the daughter know, knew about the move of the father absolutely 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 okay. so even ajit pawar the daughter Ajit... knew about the was she present i did not see her there yeah, yeah she, she was, was there she was very much there okay. even ajit pawar uh, was uh, knew all these thing because ajit pawar clearly said yesterday only he planned to announce his uh, you know this make this announcement but yesterday there was uh, mahavika sagadi's vajramut rally was there in bombay so therefore they, he was requested to announce today so entire pawar family was uh, you know in confident when the decision was taken they uh, all were you know uh, consulted hmm. then after that this decision was announced today so nobody except the party worker than the leader uh, power family was very much aware of this entire decision so i think this is not surprising therefore ajit power was uh, maneuvering the entire situation and requesting the worker not to be more emotional and respect his decision because of his age and you know other things also i think uh, by doing that ajit pawar may be making window for him we don't know the you know the coming days will tell entire thing okay. or the we will uh, see other situation okay zafar also. zafar the fact is that sharad pawar has not re uh, retired from politics uh, and if he moves from maharashtra to delhi and takes that larger role the fact is that he can be that glue which can bind opposition parties together will he not be a bigger headache for the bjp in that capacity in that role well the, 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 the well i mean we you cannot discount any thing which which may happen in the future hmm. but as of now what is so apparent for everyone including the most of the panelists who are on this show hmm. that mba is gone to break because a former chief minister and a member of mba and the congress party Hmm. the way he was speaking it was like he was spitting fire against mr pawar and against mr ajit pawar and ncp party that only suggests that uh, people who are not even aware of such meeting which may have not taken place at all hmm. he has uh, speculated about that as well that only su uh, suggests that immature leadership must have troubled mr pawar because you have asked mr uh, fernandes what did he reply hmm. it is their internal affairs why we need to comment about it whatever has to happen with will happen i mean nobody knows about it hmm. it is for them to decide it is not for us to decide hmm. whether they want to continue with mba or they want to give presidency to Maya. somebody else hmm. but 
see how Mr. Chavan was spitting fire. So that, that, that is something but which Zafar, one can you are also from Maharashtra. The statement he has made. You, you, also, you, are also are you are also from Maharashtra. Me? You know, the, the shoes that he leaves behind is huge. I mean, how will you fill in the kind of role that Mr. Pawar used to play in Maharashtra politics? Well, see, nobody will discount this fact that Mr. Pawar is a very tall leader. Across the party line, everybody will say that he is uh, somebody who has been in politics for 63 years. Mm. And everybody acknowledges that he is a very powerful leader mm. and been acknowledged by across uh, in India. Mm. Having said that, it is now his age. He must have thought about it that his, somebody else should be groomed for uh, presidentship. Maybe his daughter, maybe somebody else, maybe Mr. Ajit Pawar. Mm. Who knows? I mean, that is his discretion and it is party's discretion. Mm. But he has lived a reputation of a leader who can lead the party from the front. Okay, okay go ahead. That is Clyde. for him to decide what exactly Clyde, he wants, uh, this wants is to pursue. Certainly but the next 48 but hours he is being troubled crucial. by Congress party, something which was very evident. Yes. The, the next uh, uh, 48 hours is very crucial in the sense that what will happen uh, for the NCP? Will Mr. Pawar take back his resignation? Will he announce his successor? Will there be an election? There's a lot of uncertainty or uncharted water that NCP is in now. Clyde. M Maria, that's for me? Yes, Well, sir. you know, there's no uncertainty. I'll, I'll tell you very clear. And hear me out, because I want to respond to the BJP spokesperson also. So hear me out clearly. First of all, Mr. Pawar continues to be our leader. He will always be our leader and a mentor. So he'll guide us through all our journeys. There's no doubt about that. The question here is him reconsidering, stepping down from the post of the president of the NCP. Now, the other thing is what Mr. Prithiraj Chavan said. Fair enough, he said something. He's one of the leaders of the Congress. But as Mahavikas Agadi, we are very strong together. Now, if if the BJP spokesperson says that, you know, one statement is going to like affect the Mahavikas Agadi, my question to you is very simple. A few days back, Mr. Devendra Fadnavis uh, announced and very clearly said that, that the 2024 elections uh, in Maharashtra will be fought under the leadership of Eknath Shinde and he is going to be a CM face. A couple of hours later, the president of Maharashtra BJP, hmm. Bhavan Kulle, says that whoever leads the party, that kind of decision will be taken by the uh, BJP's parliamentary board in Delhi. So are we trying to say that the Bhavan Kulle and Fadnavis do not get along with each other? There is going to be a break within the party. Here you are talking about Mahavika Sagadi. I'm talking about two uh, completely different statements from two leaders from the same party. That does not happen. Each okay. one sometimes... So you are essentially saying that what Supriya Sule said in terms of two earthquakes, this wasn't one of those. We'll have to still See, wait the for the earthquakes, earthquakes political earthquakes. Earthquake with the opposition party, in the opposition okay, party... Okay, so it is in the opposition party. Our house is not happening in our house. Rashid Kidwai, whatever will happen, will happen in the house. Can I just say? Yes, quickly, Zafar. Ten seconds. No, no, I think she has mentioned about two earthquakes. And she forgot to mention who will be the victim. Okay. And, Fine. And, and Fine, Rashid. Rashid, that those two earthquakes I did, I did that she talked about. The, party the family knew Chavan. about Mr. Pawar's resignation. Both Ajit Pawar and the daughter knew about it. Rashid, final word to you. Yeah, I think, uh, Maria, rather than this rhetoric, the outcome will determine everything. Huh. It is an open fact that Mr. Part yes. Mr. Pawar's party was getting vulnerable. Whether Mr. Pawar gets an upper hand or not, we do not know because Mr. Zafar Islam's party, when it gets into the act, since post-2024, post we have seen they really know how to do it. Hmm. The way they kind of outwitted without Thakare, we have seen it in... In, so now, in various states. So I am saying whatever that Operation Lotus or otherwise, I don't know what the name of this uh, kind of attempt was there, which uh, Supriya is talking about. Uh, you see, it is it will still unfold. That is why so I'm essentially, I'm so sure. we do not know who has outwitted whom. And if Mr. Pawar actually manage, manages to unite the party, then he has certainly checkmated the political opponents. Thank you so and much. One last thing, Maria. You yeah. see, Mr. Pawar is not like Sonia Gandhi who would go out of the way to kind of crown Rahul Gandhi. He's very pragmatic. Mm. And this unfolding of this drama is also showing that. Okay. So, he, we'll have to wait and see whether he takes back his resignation, where he chooses his successor, all that. Too many uncertain uh, uncertainties and too many unanswered questions. Rashid Kidwai, I appreciate your time. Uh, Sudhir Surya Vanshi, Clyde, Rakesh Shetty and Zafar Islam. Shifting focus to Battleground Karnataka.
where the Congress has released its election manifesto, sparking another political firestorm with its promise to ban organizations like the Bajrang Dal if voted to power. The party has also highlighted the earlier pitch from former Chief Minister Siddharamaiah promising to increase the reservation ceiling from 50% to 75%. Both Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah led the saffron charge against the Congress, accusing the party of brazen appeasement politics. Prime Minister Modi played the BJP's signature Hindutva card, claiming the Congress had a problem with Lord Ram and have now insulted Lord Hanuman. The Brajrangdal also held protests against the Congress, accusing it of defaming a nationalist organization and supporting terrorists. The Congress has hit back at the BJP, demanding Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, to apologize for equating the Bajrang Dal with Lord Hanuman. After the abuse war between the two sides, this campaign trail has been hit by another flashpoint. A political fight over Hindutva, where the BJP has a track record of thriving. Personal attacks against the Prime Minister have hurt the Congress in past elections. Now, will this pitch to ban the Bajrang Dal boost or backfire in Karnataka? I want to make Karnataka a global Karnataka, a Karnataka with a peace, Karnataka with a progress, Karnataka with a positive approach. Bajrang Dal ke liye, jo unho ne kaha hai, ek bar Congress party Hindu Virodhi party hai, ye Congress ne sabit kar diya hai, iske pehle bhi sabit kiya hai. हनुमान जी की पवित्र भूमि को प्रणाम करने के लिए आया हो उसी समय कांग्रेस पार्टी ने अपने मैनिफेस्टो में बजरंग बली को पाने में बंद करने का निर्णय किया है पहले Piece of breaking news coming in. After Priyank Kharge's Nalayak comment against the Prime Minister, the BJP has complained to the Election Commission calling on the poll watchdog to lodge the FIR against Kharge and take punitive action. Chief Election Commission ke daftar mein hamari gambhir apatti chat karne ke liye तीनों कमिश्नर से मिला जो लगातार एक के बाद एक कांग्रेस पार्टी के नेता आपत्तिजनक भाषण और आपत्तिजनक अशब्द इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं भारत के प्रधानमंत्री के लिए Breaking news coming in. The Election Commission has now issued an advisory to all political parties saying the level of discourse during campaigning has been plummeting. The EC says all parties must maintain an expected level of dignity during the campaign. Pallavi Ghosh is joining me on the phone line. Pallavi, this is a much needed advisory. Yes, and it's a given actually. The model of code of conduct very specifically mentions the fact that there are certain Lakshman Rekha which should not be crossed. Uh, you cannot make personal attacks, you cannot make comments which can be provocative, divisive in nature, which can stoke passions, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. Yet, you know, in election after election, we do see our politicians, star campaigners breaching that Lakshman Rekha. So it's a reminder which is going in from the EC as we move towards the last leg of campaigning for the battle for Karnataka that stay within your limits. 
do not cross the model code of conduct. We'll have to wait to see because the last three to four days are also going to be the most aggressive phase, whether the star campaigners and the politicians who are campaigning actually going to be listening to the advisory of the election commission. And Balavi, the question is also, is this coming too late? Thank you so much. Surendra Jain, Joint Secretary uh, of the VHP, is joining me live. Surendra Ji, the way you have given and the decision that the Congress party has decided in the manifesto that it will be a ban on Bajrang Dal. Do you want to take it legally or raise it in which way? How do you plan to take it up? Lalke Haseen Sapne. Now, this is a very good thing that has become a very good thing today. पीएफआई के हसीन सपने क्या एक स्टेट गवर्नमेंट बैन लगा सकती है यदि कांग्रेस जीत भी गई जिसकी कोई संभावना ही नहीं है और अपने हारना सुनिश्चित स्वयं कर रही है क्या एक राज्य सरकार प्रतिबंध लगा सकती है और इनके वकीलों ने इनको बताया होगा नहीं लगा सकते फिर क्यों यह मुद्दा बना रहे हैं इसका मतलब मुस्लिम अपीजमेंट वोट बैंक की राजनीति केवल इसके लिए कर रहे हैं और साफ लगता है कि ये एजेंडा पीएफआई के द्वारा फिक्स किया गया क्योंकि कांग्रेस और पीएफआई ये दोनों लंबे समय तक मिलकर काम करते रहे लेकिन मैं इसके लिए आप मैं जो बोल रहे हैं कि कांग्रेस और पीएफआई का लिंक है आ, लेकिन पीएफआई को बैन करने का डिमांड जो भाजपा की तरफ से आ रहा था भाजपा के काफी सारे नेता कर रहे हैं तो भाजपा की सरकार थी कर्नाटका में उनकी आपकी सरकार है दिल्ली में तो क्यों नहीं बैन किया गया पीएफआई पर मुझे लगता है पीएफआई तो इस समय बैन है और इन्होंने ही किया है लेकिन इसका जो पहला अवतार था सिमी सिमी पर जब बैन लगाया था तब सोनिया गांधी जी ने संसद में शोर मचाया था कांग्रेस के वकील अदालत में गए थे और कांग्रेस के कार्यकर्ता सड़कों पर प्रदर्शन कर रहे थे हिंसक प्रदर्शन कर रहे थे नंबर एक नंबर दो अभी पी पूरे देश में एक्टिव हुई सरतन से जुदा गैंग के रूप में जयपुर समेत किसी भी कांग्रेस के द्वारा शासित राज्य में कोई कार्यवाही इन पर नहीं थी यहां तक कि इनके कंडेमनेशन भी नहीं किया इन्होंने इसका मतलब बड़ा साफ था अगर ये लोग कार्यवाही करते तो आज अजमेर में कन्हैया नहीं मारा जाता वो जीवित होता हमारे बीच के अंदर जिस कर्नाटक की बात हम कर रहे हैं इस कर्नाटक के अंदर पिछले तीस सालों में चालीस से अधिक हिंदुओं की लिंचिंग हो चुकी है मैं उसकी लिस्ट दे सकता हूं चालीस से अधिक और कोई भी हत्या करके भाग जाता था केरल के अंदर कहां सोते थे ये लोग तो साफ दिखाई देता है वो पीएफआई करता था और वो पीएफआई इनके सहारे पर चलता था इसका पिछला अवतार सिमी वो तो पूर्ण रूप से खुलकर काम इनके राज्यों में करता था उसके सबूत आज भी विद्यमान है लेकिन सुरेंद्र जी अगर अग, अगर जहां तक बजरंग दल की बात की जाए अगर कांग्रेस आ जाती है और बैन लगाती है तो क्या आप उसको चैलेंज करेंगे कोर्ट में बैन लगा ही नहीं सकती ये राज्य सरकार के प्रेरोगेटिव है ही नहीं पहली बात मैंने जैसा बताया ये स्वयं सरकार बनाने वाली नहीं है क्योंकि इस तरह की हरकतें करके अरे आप जहां हनुमान का जन्म होता है उस स्थली पर जाकर बजरंग बली के नारे लगाने वाले लोगों पर प्रतिबंध की बात करते हो मैं आपको ध्यान दिला दू हनुमान जयंती पर सबसे बड़े कार्यक्रम पूरे देश में कर्नाटक के अंदर होते हैं और आप पहले राम से लड़े अब हनुमान से लड़ रहे हो पहली लड़ाई भी आपने हारी थी ये लड़ाई भी आप हारोगे ये निश्चित है right, एक आरोप हमारे एक आरोप हमारे ऊपर लग रहा है कि बजरंग दल के लोग नफरत फैलाते हैं अरे नफरत कौन फैलाता है भाई आज तक बजरंग दल के एक भी कार्यकर्ता पर नफरत फैलाने का केस सिद्ध हुआ है क्या आज तक कोई असंवैधानिक काम हमने किया है क्या हाँ प्रचार जरूर किया गया है क्योंकि हम थोड़ी प्रखरता के साथ काम करते हैं अभी कुछ दिन पूर्व जब सरतन से जुदा गैंग पूरे देश में एक्टिव हुआ था आतंक का माहौल बना था तो बजरंग दल के लोगों ने हिंदू हेल्पलाइन नंबर जारी किए थे और जो हमारे पास शिकायतें आई थी हमने सरकार पर दबाव डालकर उन पर कार्यवाही कराई थी आतंक खत्म हो गया इसलिए तब से ही पी और कांग्रेस इन दोनों की आंखों की हम किरकिरी बने हुए हैं और वो उन्होंने भड़ा सभी निकाली है इस मैनिफेस्टो में जिसको ये कभी लागू नहीं कर सकते ओके 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 थैंक यू सो मच सुरेंद्र जैन जी फॉर योर थॉट टॉम वडक्कन बीजेपी स्पोक्स पर्सन संकेत यनागी कांग्रेस स्पोक्स पर्सन वी आल्सो हैव प्रोफेसर माधव नालापाट सीनियर जर्नलिस्ट संकेत यनागी यू वांटेड इट ऑन इश्यूज 
and you have entered very choppy waters. So our concentration is on a development and we have a developmental agenda and we believe in secularism. We believe in peace and harmony in the society and we believe in the law and order to be maintained in the society. If anything is coming in the way of maintaining law and order... So Bajrangal is coming in the way of maintaining law and order, are you saying that? One by one. Hmm. So any organization which is coming in the way of maintaining the law and order or maintaining the peace and harmony in the society, irrespective of the religion which is it is affiliated to, irrespective of the party it is affiliated to, we said you would deal with it in accordance with law. What does it mean? We said in accordance with law. I, I underline that word. Hmm. So whichever is permissible under law, okay. as per the provisions under law, you would deal with so it. So what exactly has Bajrangdal done in uh, Karnataka? If it has not done anything, hmm. there is nothing for it to worry about it. If it has really done something... No, but then you then have declared that they will be banned. I mean, so without... There are, what is there the are, evidence that you have against them? The Suprema FSI, there are certain evidences wherein it has acted detrimental to the interest of the people, detrimental to the peace and harmony in the society, detrimental to the law and order. If at all that Prima FSI evidence is not sufficient enough, it would be investigated if we come to power. If there is a material, then we would deal with it, not just Bajrangdal, be it any organization affiliated to any religion. What matters for us? No, but you have named Bajrangdal. But so you have us, specifically talked about Bajrangdal in your manifesto. If you are not, then so we would have asked another question. Tom Vadakan, Tom Vadakan, come in on this. Uh, you know, you were supposed to be holding Congress accountable on its uh, on its on on issues. Is this, uh, you know, the most important issue that is related to the people of Karnataka? Maria, could you repeat your question? The is, this, audio was... is, is, is the ban on Bajrang Dal something that is so... Is, is Why is it becoming a primary issue in Karnataka? Maria, it's like this. Uh, if Congress party does not learn from history... When, uh, whenever they have gone into this kind of an act and have put it in black and white, PFI stands banned, Maria. And here they say that they will ban the PFI. Well, actually, it was not the PFI they were targeting, it was the Bajranga. The point here is, are they the spokesman for PFI? Is this some kind of a re revenge or appeasement tactics to uh, to uh, to appease the PFI? I mean, these are larger questions the public is asking. Hmm. Now, Hanuman Jayanti is celebrated hugely, I, I have to admit this, in the state of Karnataka. Hmm. And Hanumanji has a large follower, not only across the country, but Karnataka is the birthplace of Hanumanji. And pray... They are saying that anybody who chants Jai Bajrangal is to be locked up. Earlier, they locked up uh, Sri Ram uh, uh, Ji's uh, issue. They literally locked it up. Hmm. And then they came to uh, the Supreme Court saying that they didn't believe in Sri Ram. Now, these are absolutely anti uh, community. I don't want to go into the name name of the community. The point is, it's obvious. Now, okay, this so kind this of is essentially what the BJP is saying that because the central government went on and uh, banned uh, PFI, this is a counter that is coming in from the Congress Party in in Karnataka in its manifesto. Professor Madhav Nalapat, you know, over the last few days, interestingly, it is BJP versus Congress that we are discussing. Uh, the Congress party certainly knows that these are polarizing issues. Somebody like a Malikarjun Kharge will not be making a comment of that nature, what he did against the Prime Minister, if it was not part of a strategy. I mean, it baffles me, why would he say something like that? And now, a mention of Bajrang Dal in the Congress manifesto. It could happen after the elections, let the results come. If you are in power, you can do so many things. If you make these moves, is it 
part of Congress party looking at this election, trying to convert it into a bipolar contest and uh, ensuring that uh, the JDS gets further sidelined? Well, Maria, uh, your, the, your last sentence uh, says it all. The reality is for the Congress party, a substantial performance in Karnataka, hmm. preferably an outright majority, hmm. is absolutely existential to the future of the party. Right. For the simple reason that many parties, regional parties, you're talking about the Trinamool Congress, you're talking uh, about the Ahmadmi Party, all of them have the view hmm. that the Congress party is less, uh, you know, a support than a problem for the opposition. Hmm. So the Congress party has got to show that it and it alone has the potential to challenge the BJP. And therefore, the Congress party is working very hard to make this a two-cornered contest. And of course, there you have Mr. Devagoda's party. Uh, uh, frankly, uh, that party also, it's existential. If they do badly in this so, election... So, Professor Nalapad, you are saying yeah. that in this existential ballot, uh, you know, uh, battle, the Congress party is deliberately trying to make this a bipolar contest by raking up issues which will have the BJP react and it's part of a strategy. It's not something that they are trying to polarize elections for? Look, the fact is, elections are a, a, a situation in which votes do happen and polarization takes place. And so far as the Congress is concerned, I think the Congress party's uh, point is they need two or three large constituencies to basically support them. Hmm. They are counting on the Vokaliga support through Shiv Kumar. They are counting on the backward... Uh, class support through Siddharamaya. Uh, they are counting on, on Malik Arjun Kharge. They are also counting on the Muslim uh, votes. And for that, I think they have raised this issue. So I think Congress is now putting whatever is possible in the basket that they believe will attract fringe voters. The problem is independent voters, moderate voters may not really like this. And, the, and now and in Karnataka, from my assessment, the role of the candidate is going to be very important. Hmm. I think the Karnataka voter is going to pay a lot of attention to the candidate. And whichever party shows that they have a better slate of candidates, I think that party will have uh, a technical So advantage. basically, uh, Professor Nalapad, it's not, you know, just accidental that first Mr. Kharge talks about it the way he did against the Prime Minister and now this move of putting Bajrang Dal as an organization which will be banned in the manifesto. Sanket Yanagi, you know, somebody like Professor Nalapad thinks that this is part of a strategy. No, I would not uh, wish to answer that question whether it's a strategy or otherwise. Hmm. But the point here is, we believe, we the Congress, believe in constitutional morality and the constitutional principles. Hmm. We believe in Ram Rajya. Ram Rajya and Raj Dharma have, have to be together to maintain the Raj Dharma development. But are you not should... worried that this is also going to paint you as a party which believes in appeasement of a particular no. minority community no. and as far as the majority is concerned, you're going after them. Will it, no. do you not run the risk of being projected as anti-Hindu? So when we are equally dealing with the organizations which are whether affiliated to one community A or one community B, hmm. that hardly matters for us. Hmm. What matters for us and what what is our focus is the development. And the second focus should be on the maintenance of peace and harmony. Hmm. Third should be on the law and order. Whoever is disrupting the law and order, whoever is disrupting the peace and harmony in the society, irrespective of the religion, we would deal with it with an iron hand. We would deal with our Christian missionaries or Christian organization or Muslim organization or Persian organization or Hindu organization. For that matter, it hardly matters which community it belongs to, which party it is affiliated to. The one action by Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel in the year 1948 hmm. has changed India. And because of which reason, India has grown in one direction that is developmental focused. And now, okay. if we are following okay, the same okay, path, okay. Um, uh... Mr. Mr. Tom Badakar, is, isn't that a concern that you're not even talking about JDS? Pardon, I couldn't get you a question. Hey, Tom Badakar, Mr. Tom Badakar. Yeah, what is the question? 
that you're not even talking about JDS. You've almost, uh, you know, uh, the the BJP seem to not even give any importance to the fact that there is a third player which has a decisive vote and also a very captive vote. See, that's um, JDS is essentially the B team of the Congress. Uh, we all know that. So, I mean, I think we are focused on uh, the primary MUA, that's the Congress. And the Congress in its manifesto has, shown, uh, has tried to change the goalposts. And they've done a self goal, Maria. Hmm. It's basically, uh, it was a good tough fight that was going on. But now with Karge, the president, calling prime minister the what he said, and then the son followed it up by calling him, um, I, I, I don't want to repeat those words. Hmm. But then there, if this is strategy, well, I don't know what is... Okay, then uh, Professor Nalapan, is this self goal on the part of the Congress party? Yes, this is a self goal, and this is detrimental for the elections. And you'd see that uh, what they call strategy is not strategy enough because okay. I think. Professor Nalapan, final words for you quickly, sir. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, you know, uh, Maria, the Congress is looking at 2024. It's looking at leading the opposition coalition against the BJP, hmm. and they are looking to, to have the, the voters consider them the strongest point of the spear against uh, the BJP. But I do believe they're making a mistake it, uh... in going after Prime Minister Modi mm. for the simple reason that he is a very popular leader. Mm. And we can I see those visuals of Prime Minister holding a roadshow in, in Karnataka been, also. Yes. That's always been a negative and the Congress is repeating that mistake over okay. and over and over Let's see. Again. From an election which was seen as advantage, Congress is now a contest in Karnataka. That's what is happening on ground. Tom Vadakkan, Sanket Yanagi and Professor Madhav Nalapar, thank you so much. A story will continue to track very, very closely. Battle for Karnataka is only heating up. That's all from me. Thanks so much. Not twice over. Good evening, Zaka. Priyank's entire press meet today was three hours long. He spoke in detail post what you have spoken about when he said any family which has somebody that doesn't help them, what is the point of it? In particular, reference to the Banjara community, which was out in arms and also protesting that they will not even vote in these elections and will boycott voting because of the new reservation policy that has been given to them. And I think the clarification has been offered sufficiently and the Congress is the one, even with the abuses being hurled at us, we've kept to the issue and the plank. You know, Zaka, I will take this to deeply, deeply appreciate Shehzad Poonawala for the fact that he is the first BJP spokesperson to talk about any development because every other part of the BJP leadership and their spokespersons talk about things like the reservations which is now stayed or talk about communal angles as the only agenda that they have in these elections or third, even more, this pity party while saying that I am being attacked and whatnot, right? That is all that the BJP is talking about. And no, but who is giving the BJP me. that issue, Ashwarya? I mean, surely it can't be your case uh, that the BJP forced these words into the mouth of Mr. Kharge and his son. You are giving the them an issue on a platter, it. they will take it. The fact of the matter here, Zaka, is the Congress party, fine. If you believe that these abusers are going to hold uh, weight, then well and good. But they have no answers for the sort of development and the issue-based plank that we're running today. And that is what we're talking about. The BJP here comes and they do not talk about any double engine Sarkar or Bomai or forget this Lingayat CM himself, which was Mr. Yadurapa and Bomai, and talk about some so called double engine while not mentioning anything about the state. The Prime Minister talks like he is the chief ministerial face here. And you know, Shehzad also spoke about this development. You're talking about two new airports. The T2 is not going to work until next year. Your Shimoga airport that you inaugurated with much pomp has not seen a single flight. You spoke about the Bangalore Mysore Highway, where 21 kilometers of that stretch is not there. And the last time I saw even small rains, it turned into Venice. It was a beautiful canal for people and their boats. Okay. So Shehzad 
Prasad, even the idea, uh, Amit Shah himself, the Home Minister, in a recent interview admitted that he had legacy problems and infrastructure had been ignored in okay. Bangalore, in and around. Which Shah, Shahzad, quick response, and then I'll open this up to Zaka, uh, Prakash you know, yours Garadi is, and Ratna. Why, yours is one of the few yeah, shows. Let, let, him, let him respond, quick, quick response. Zaka, yeah, yours is one of the few shows where we can actually talk about the issues of the people and therefore I'll place some facts. Aishwarya, please listen. You tell me what you did between 13 to 18, I'll tell you what we did between 18 to 23. 5,000 kilometers of road, 1,700. Belgavi is a home to large number of weaver population who weave polyester and cotton. An estimate says that there are almost 13,000 weaver families in Belgavi city alone and around 1 lakh in Belgavi district. In the recent times, following a dis financial distress, weavers of Belgavi community and other districts staged out a massive rally with a charter of demands that needs to be met. I'm accompanied by one such weaver family. Let me quickly cut across and speak to them related to all the issues which they are facing right now and the demands which they want to be fulfilled. Sir, Namaste. In recent time, you know, there was a rally in the recent time. What was the demand? What was the demand? What was the first time? What was the first time? I didn't think it was a good thing. 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 What demand is there, sir? बीड़े सावलत गोड़ा निकार गोड़ के तंदरे बाढ़ दार सावलत गोड़ा ये कैसी एसटी मंदी के मत ये न सावलत शिक्ता हो रहा आओ नम मंदी के नो सावलत शिक्लें थे कैसी ना वो बीड़ के इट्टी दे उरे सर इन्ह बेरे ये न जैसर निम्न डिमांड हो सर डिमांड अंत तंदरे ये वागा एसटी एसटी एक 90 परसेंट सब फिटी शिक्ता ला � but there is no demand for you, you don't have to fulfill it. That's why we are not able to do it, sir. Last time, we were able to do it in the last time. We were able to do it in the last time. We were able to do it in the last time. We were able to do it in the last time. We were able to do it in the last time. निम्मा ये लाभ आवश्यक नहीं डिस्ट्री वंते ले आश्वासन नहीं दिया रहा सर। ओके सर लोन देना ये लता इधर लोन दो ये नहीं दादू विषय। आह लोन अंतर जरा ये वाका नम्मा नेशनलाइज्ड बैंक नले नम्मे क्या दो रहते बड़े लोन गल सिक्ता ले लता सर। ये वाका अदनो कोड़ा नाउ चर्चे लेतं अदनो कोड़ा भरोसे लेने ना उमाड़ी करती हैं वैंता इधर है जीरो परसेंट सालों सब सालों नमन निर्भर करता है ना उमाड़ी विशाल चीज़ दिया होगा। So there you go the viewer community say that they want many other demands that needs to be fulfilled like subsidies and the loans that needs to be provided but the representatives have said that they will fulfill their demands and which are yet to be met and still there you go they are voicing out their concerns and demands. Uh, you know, which is the major reason for the financial distress. Hopefully, the representatives wake up to this and fulfill the demands. Namaste, Jai Hind and welcome to this edition of The Right Stand. I'm Anand Narsimhan. There is plenty lined up for you this evening, ladies and gentlemen. First, let's start with pole-bound Karnataka. I want to make Karnataka a global Karnataka. A Karnataka with a peace, Karnataka with a progress. Karnataka with a positive approach. All, all section of this society will be covered with us. Ek bar Congress party, Hindu Virodhi party hai, ye Congress ne sabit kar diya hai. Iske pehle bhi sabit kiya hai. Anuman ji ki palipra bhoomi ko pranam karne ke liye aaya ho. उसी समय कांग्रेस पार्टी ने बजरंग बली को ताने में बंद करने का निर्णय किया है
Yes, the battle for Karnataka heating up. The Congress releasing its blueprint for the Karnataka elections with development is one of the focus. But the Congress party also quoting controversy. If voted to power, the Congress has vowed to ban organizations like the Pajrang Dal EFI. The Congress feels that they are spreading hatred amongst communities on the basis of caste and religion. The Bajrang Dal too has staged protests against the Congress party and accused the Grand Old Party of supporting terrorists. The BJP also quick to slam the Congress and accuse the party of insulting those who are bhakts of Bajrang Bali, those who chant the name of Bajrang Bali. That's what Prime Minister Narendra Modi said. He led the attack claiming that first they locked up those who worship Lord Ram and now they want, up, uh, want to lock up those who chant Bajrang Bali's name. This is what PM has said in Polbound Karnataka. He also had a road show earlier in the day. So what have the Congress actually said in its manifesto? The manifesto reads that if voted to power, the Congress will take decisive action against organizations like Bajrang Dal, PFI, along with other organizations for promoting enmity or hatred. They also allege that groups like Bajrang Dal are spreading hatred on ground on the basis of caste or religion. Now, massive war of words has erupted between the Congress and the BJP over the ban. This entire aspect of bringing in the Bajrang Dal. The PFI is already banned across the country, ladies and gentlemen. The issue was that's been taken umbrage to is why bring in the Bajrang Dal. The BJP's charge is Congress is a Muslim fundamentalist party. The Congress's counter is action against fundamentalist groups, is what we have said. The BJP's charge is Jinnah wouldn't make such a manifesto. The Congress has said we will act against organizations spreading hatred. The BJP's charge is Congress against Ram and Bajrang Bali. The Congress's counter is will not tolerate lawlessness in the state. The Congress insulting Lord Hanuman. Congress's counter BJP selective in banning organizations. Now. A lot of questions that actually emerge and that remain in our, uh, uh, that come to mind at this point. We will ask these questions one by one and uh, try and go and take it across to our uh, pan uh, panelists and, and, and set up the face off. One of the first questions, one of the first questions that come to mind is why club the Bajrang Dal with a band outfit PFI? Is the Congress targeting Bajrang Dal to polarize voters? Does the Congress believe Bajrang Dal is a terror outfit like the PFI? Did the Congress or has the Congress scored a self-goal by targeting Bajrang Dal? Some of the other questions that